the Bitcoin millionaire whose body was found dead in a lake May 30th in Arkansas. Today, we have news about John's fiance, the mystery woman that everybody wants to know about. And also, John's father has spoken. Let's get into it, guys. This is breaking news. Fox News Digital Channel. So, slain Missouri doctor left behind pregnant fiance. Family says they have been left in the dark. In the dark. ER physician John Forsythe reportedly told family he might be in danger. Exclusive details. The family of slain Missouri ER doctor and crypto millionaire John Forsythe say they have been kept completely in the dark aside from a mystifying statement from law enforcement. The Missouri State Police have told us we know more than you think we do. John's brother Richard told Fox News Digital, we are mad. We are being kept so in the dark. The doctor's body was found with a gunshot wound floating in the Arkansas Lake in the Ozarks nine days after he vanished. With a family saying he had told them in the past he might be in danger. Although detectives interviewed Richard for two hours Tuesday, they did not share any details, he said. John disappeared May 21st after wrapping up a hospital shift in Cadsville, Missouri, a town of 3,100. Now, the cryptic statement that has led to more questions and answers appears to be in keeping with, with the secretive life of John, whose bizarre demise echoes a plotline from Netflix crime thriller Ozark. Ozark. Have you watched Ozark? Is it good? Should I watch it? Tell me in the comments. A proposal and a baby on the way. The plot thickens here. The beloved ER physician's fiance, a nurse, a nurse he worked with, is eight months pregnant with the couple's first child, a source told Fox Digital, which is withholding her name to protect her privacy. Well, okay, so he worked with her. He's a nurse, pregnant eight months. Most of his family did not know he had gotten engaged and none had met the mother of his child until after his May 21st disappearance. Interesting. Nobody met her. Okay, here's a map. He leaves the hospital, 7 a.m. About a mile apart is where his car is found. At about 7.12, it appears on camera there. An SUV shows up. An SUV leaves. Then John walks around. This actually is not the picture of the place where his car was found. I think this is the impound lot picture because I see the RV over there. Now, 20 miles away, his body is found in the lake. 20 miles. You know, I was thinking, it's possible to walk 20 miles. Not something you want to do. I, I, know, I, don't, I don't really want to go down that route for a couple reasons. Number one, YouTube does not like it when you talk about, no, well, it was either murder or it was something else. That's something else I don't want to say out loud. But it is possible to get there on foot. But it's also very suspicious that a white SUV showed up. Probably had something to do with his disappearance. Okay, he finalized his divorce from his ex-wife in May with an order to pay about $19,000 a month in alimony and child support. We go over that in detail in my other videos. I'll put the links in the description, which he did not contest. Court records show. And you might want to hit subscribe and hit that bell because I figure I'll be putting out another video soon about this. The doting father has eight children, seven of whom he shares with his ex-wife, the one that he married twice, divorced twice. John's father, Robert Forsythe, spoke publicly for the first time to Fox News Digital. And he said that the loss is very tragic because John's child will never be able to meet him. It only gets worse. It only gets worse. The father says, I've never cried and prayed so much in the last two weeks. It's just been wrenching. Imagine it has been, said the 76-year-old neuropsychologist. They were planning their wedding. Robert only learned of the proposal and pregnancy after the tragedy. So his own father did not know she was eight months pregnant, did not know he had planned to get married. Don't you usually brag about stuff like this? I think so. Why, why not mention it? Why not? A public vigil will be held June 8th at Monet City Park in Missouri. Hit that bell. So John, who often worked 80 hours a week, wrapped up his 12-hour shift on May 21st at Mercy Hospital. He texted his fiance that he would see her in a little bit at about 7 a.m., then abruptly stopped responding. Hassville police detective Stuart Lombard previously told Fox News Digital. That's what he said. Nice view of the hospital right here. John was captured on security footage heading towards his luxury RV. 
a Thor motor coach challenger whose base model retails for 260000 John lived more than an hour away and stayed in the RV during his punishing shifts. It was convenient for him to be just out in a parking lot in front of the hospital, napping, waiting for the next call. Now, 7.12 a.m., a dark sedan was captured on grainy, grainy security footage pulling into a parking lot of the Casville Aquatic Center about a mile from the hospital, according to Lombard. Three minutes later, a white SUV pulled up alongside the sedan and then departed. A man who looked like John can be seen walking around 10 to 15 minutes later. He was due back at the hospital at 7 p.m. but never showed up. His Acura was found that night hidden near a waste facility about 700 feet from the aquatic center's entrance. He had left his provisions, including his wallet, passport, five phones, and his laptop in his unlocked RV and car. His stethoscope dangled from the rearview mirror of his car. After nine frantic days of searching for the missing father, a kayaker found his body in Beaver Lake, about about 25 miles south of Cassville. That must have been just horrific. This is such a sad story and it just seems to get worse. It just gets worse. So he goes down to Beaver Lake when he hasn't slept all night. He doesn't have a car and he doesn't have a cell phone, Richard says. It doesn't make any sense. There's no way he went down on his own accord. It is a stretch. It's just 25 miles. That's almost the length of a marathon. Marathon's 26.2 miles. I ran a marathon once. You remember stuff like that. But it, it's walkable. That's why I say it. it's walkable. A person can walk a marathon, a nice good walk in about seven hours, seven and a half hours. Red flags. John was kidnapped and then released February 2022, according to his brother and father, who only learned of the abduction after he went missing again. It was cold. He was zip tied. He was made to feel unsafe and taken on a car ride with some, with some people to a bridge and was threatened said Richard, who created a cryptocurrency called Onfo with his brother. And remember, I broke this myself. You guys know it. You heard it here first. I found out that there were two cryptos, Ambicash and then Onfo coin. So give me credit where credit's due, please. All right. This is a crypto channel. I know crypto. Look at this beautiful picture. The Forsyth family poses for a photograph in Springfield, Missouri. This is Richard, the brother. Could this be father, perhaps? The person who told them about the kidnapping that Foresight did not report the harrowing ordeal to protect those close to him, but said it was somehow related to cryptocurrency. Okay, the person who told them about the kidnapping says it was somehow related to cryptocurrency. There we have it. There we have it. So that's, a, that's the kidnapping part. Now you have to watch my other videos. I get into my theories of what could have went wrong with that crypto on foe. The way it was set up, the way it was put out there, you might want to check that out. I don't want to get into that in this one, but I have my suspicions. I have my suspicions. And that's all it is, is suspicions, but I know crypto. Follow the money. And we'll get to the bottom of this. Many times he mentioned he might be in danger, Richard said, but it was always really vague. Always really vague. Robert added about his son that he had made some enemies and would imply there are people who don't like what I'm doing, but he did not elaborate. Okay, okay, let's look at this. So there were people who didn't like what he was doing. Could it be as a doctor? Kind of doubt that's the vibe. I think it was more in their projects. And I got into the crypto projects and plus into the cybersecurity project that John was also working. Now, these are very competitive niches to say the least. Okay, I have a crypto channel. Do you want to know some stuff about what happened when I started this channel? Okay, it won't be long. When I started this channel, I kind of sucked at it. I didn't have any nice equipment. I used my cell phone. I'm really into crypto. Like I'm passionate about it. And my friends around me in real life got fed up with me talking about cryptocurrency all the time. They got fed up with me talking about Bitcoin. So I started a YouTube channel. I'm like, well, I'll have a crypto channel. And I, I called it Crypto Housewife. And I recently changed it to the crypto channel. But I would be talking about crypto, making these, you know, two bit videos. And I had a lot of attacks in the comment section. I was like, whoa, okay, my videos are not that great, but they're not worthy of those attacks. I thought it was odd. And I actually, I was considering not doing it, stopping the channel. And then I'm like, hmm, they're seeing me as competition. Competition, like another crypto channel, another channel taking eyes off of maybe their channel. And they're using, you know, like a fake name, another account to like, go and comment on my videos and say mean stuff to try to get me out of the environment. So there is some meanness in crypto, some competitiveness. I saw it firsthand. 
Now, is that what was going on here? Check out my other videos. I'll tell you what I know about it. I was also asked a question in the comments. Could Sam Bankman Freed be related to this case? Did Sam Bankman Freed have something to do with the disappearance of John? No. No, there's no way. And I'll tell you why. For them to have had a relationship with Sam Bankman Freed of FTX, remember FTX? That collapsed. There was some cooking the books going on, let's just say, in that crypto. Client money got used in ways, commingled in ways that should not have been. Sam Bankman Freed will be in court in October on those huge charges, huge charges. I have videos about that. No, no, there wouldn't be. You see, because Sam Bankman Freed went out and took money from investors. So John and Richard would have had to invest their money in with with FTX somehow, some way. And I think Richard, right here, would not have fell for Sam Bakeman Freed's charms. Richard would not have given his money to the likes of SBF. Trust me on this, Richard's an intelligent man. After watching that video, his interview, I could tell he's not the kind of guy you dupe easily. So no, there would be no connection to Sam Bakeman Freed or FTX. They would have smelt it on him. They would have smelt trouble and stayed away from that guy. I just know it. And he'd be, they'd be one of the few who did, let's just say. Also, Sam Bakeman Freed would have taken the money, not the other way around. In order for John to have been murdered by SBF somehow, some way, John Richard would have had to take SBF's money. And that's not the case. SBF was taking money for FTX. And we'll just leave it at that. Okay, moving on. Onfo, a revolution of cryptocurrency. Okay, in an interview with Forbes in 2020, Foresight talked about investing in Bitcoin early on. Not just investing, he was mining it. Important. I want a Bitcoin miner. Okay, anyway, it became obvious to me that math-based cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin would eventually supplant sovereign notes. Supplant. He told the magazine, I mined Bitcoin and like very early on and held on to them. I'm so proud of him. That is fantastic. I love this. Did you know that back in the day when Bitcoin was just coming out, you would have bought 25 cents worth? And then when Bitcoin hit its peak a couple of years ago, that 25 cents would have grown to $1 million. Let that soak in. So yes, if he mined Bitcoin back in the day and held it, multi-millionaire, easy. I know, let that sink in for a moment. God, he missed the boat on that. <laughs> oh, all right. Here is a picture of the dive team searching the lake Friday, June 2nd. Richard said, Onfo, this is purely a philanthropic venture. He called it a cryptocurrency designed to be accessible to the masses, unlike Bitcoin, which must be bought or mined. Bitcoin is proof of work. It's proof of work. The Securities and Exchange Commission right now is cracking down on crypto, cracking down on crypto exchanges like Coinbase and Binance. Like this is just coming out. And Bitcoin is a proof of work. You have to mine it. It has... That's how it's created. It's mined and then it's put out there with their project. They called it something silly. They called it proof of effort, proof of effort, which basically meant my understanding, Richard and John invented the coins themselves and then pushed them out there in kind of a multi-level marketing fashion. Basically, I could get some coins by signing up to get some coins. And I think it was either free to sign up to get some free coins or you had to pay $10 to do an ID check. I still don't know about that. And I saw that on Facebook, like on Onfo Coins Facebook page in the comments. Why are the people that I'm getting to sign up underneath me are telling me now they have to pay $10 to get these free coins? So that could make people mad. My understanding what John and Richard's plan was for Onfo Coin, based on their white paper was just to get this thing out there. Just get a lot of people holding this, this token globally and then let some time go by because time went by with Bitcoin before Bitcoin to, took off. So their logic was, let some time go by and maybe Onfo Coin will catch on. Like I said, what they were doing wasn't easy and I got to hand it to them, they tried. But Onfo Coin wasn't listed on exchanges. You got this, this token and then you couldn't sell it. You couldn't sell it. So people were like, hmm. Okay, but anyway, with Onfo Coin, users signed up for a referral code and earn cryptocurrency by sharing that code with others. So that's where we're calling that kind of a multi-level marketing kind of thing. I'm here, I send out an email to a bunch of my friends, they get some awful coin, then their friends get some, and then, then it trickles up. They get coins, I get a few coins for bringing them into it. And it was very well planned out. 
I think they really thought ahead to make sure that they wouldn't get into trouble with the SEC, which is smart, very smart. So the more the user grows the network, the more they earn. But the digital currency, one of approximately 22,000, try 25,000, remains obscure, obscure. I get into reasons why it's obscure in my other video. Now, I didn't know this. At one point, the Onfo website went dark and there were hiccups in the endeavor. Well, I imagine people would have panicked if suddenly, you know, they have all these Onfo coins and the website doesn't show up, which had rankled some users, Richard said. People were angry with us for a variety of reasons, he added. We were trying to innovate. We were trying to do something new. In any finance related business, you get a lot of malice in a concentrated form. I believe it. I believe it. And here's what kind of made me a bit angry about the whole Onfo coin thing. I suspect that people were taking advantage of Onfo coin. In my other video, I tell you where some people were actually taking advantage of the MLM, where they would make fake profiles to like take more tokens. And so they had to change the rules. You had to be like one person one time getting your coins and then getting other people below you to get involved into it. So there were people who were greedy and taking advantage of what I would call a loophole in their system. And so I, I can see where people would get mad after once they close that loophole. Again, that's pure greed on, you know, the token holder side, taking advantage of a loophole and at the expense of John and Richard. Now, three agencies investigating John's murder are the Missouri State Highway Patrol, the Benton County Sheriff's Office in Arkansas, and the Cassville Police Department. And they did not return requests for comment to Fox News. Again, Forsyth's ex-wife and fiance declined to talk to Fox News Digital. What an interview. What an article. Thank you, Fox News. This is fantastic. Fantastic. We have a lot to think about now. I notice you guys are a lot like me. We like to watch whodunits. Like, I'm the kind of person on Friday night, Saturday night, I'm like taping Dateline NBC, 2020, 48 hours mystery. And so I want to put more of this type of content out there related to crypto, show my point of view on the crypto angle because I have in-depth info on crypto. This fascinates me. It's a very tragic story. I don't want to play that down. It's sad. Finding out that his fiance is pregnant, I hope that turns out to be one of the best things that ever happened to her. But it is tragic that we're finding out this way and John's not going to be around to see the child. So please check out my other three videos. I'll put links in the description. Hit that subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified when my next video comes out and I will keep you guys posted. I said I would. Go out and have yourself a fantastic day. Live life to the fullest. Bye-bye.